call the meeting to order. This is a work session. Uh, we will not have public comments uh, from the audience uh, unless we approach somebody, one of the commissioners does, things of that sort. This is a uh, purely a work session. Uh, Ms. York? Sure. Good afternoon, commissioners. I have uh, a couple of slides, but I don't think I want to go through all of them. I'm, we're just prepared with information to help um, support any questions or um, additional needs for information that you might have. Um, I do want to take us back to where we left off. So let me see if I can get this clicker to work. Scott, it's not wanting to advance. Okay, so this is where we left off at your last work session on May 23rd. We were, uh, just to reorient you, we had two columns we were working through. Commissioner Turner had proposed some adjustments for discussion, so I've got those listed on the left. And then um, the adjustment that each of those would equate to in your budget. So we had a revenue neutral rate of 42.59 and an inflation neutral rate of 43.51. And we left off needing about, um, well, you can see sort of the bottom line there, kind of where we got to with that. But there was not discussion from the board for each of those adjustments. So staff wasn't really sure how far you wanted us to, to go. Um, to answer questions about those. So I do have some slides as we go through each one, if that's the desire of the board that I can talk to um, a little further. Um, also, some commissioners have discussed um, maybe a fourth option for consideration there, which would be setting a tax rate, I'm sorry if there's echo, uh, a tax rate of around 43 cents. That would generate uh, 108 million in revenue. So if you would like to explore that option, we can create the spreadsheet that we're working from with a third column of 43 cents and see how the adjustments um, calculate in, in that. And you already got that prepared. We have a template of that ready to go if you would like to add that as an option. Can you provide us copies or a copy? Uh, we're gonna project it up there. Jessica, do you have that spreadsheet? So it's very similar to what we were working from last time with the third column there, column D, 43 cent tax rate. Um, that would require $6 million worth of cuts. And I did have one, um, one change from that adjustment list that was made by Commissioner Turner on the, um, oh, I think I named it something else on mine. Um, but it's a 90-day position freeze, hiring freeze. That um, has gone down to 214000 I think we are looking at something around two eighty, And I do have a handout for you. Uh, of those current positions, that was a snapshot from four weeks ago. Some positions have changed in that time frame. So I can pass that out if the board would like to talk about that option a little further. So if you'll let me know which direction you'd like to go, we can be prepared to flush out these a little further or hear some different adjustments. Can you have someone print that slide for the, for the commissioner? I sure can. Can you take that? Um, Jessica, can you email us that? I don't think we have that. I can print it. We'll grab it. If you'll just email it to Brian. Yeah. yeah. We're going to find out how fast Brian <laughs> is. <laughs> Okay, we've heard uh, a partial from Mr. Lashley uh, in some details. We have from Mr. Turner. Um, and so I'm going to ask, and we'll just go in turn, uh, that each of us, one, state first what you wish the tax rate to be. 
that is. Do you want it to be uh, the revenue neutral? Do you want it to be the 43? Do you want it to be the rate that the county you know, what What number are you suggesting? And then what cuts you're recommending to reach that number? Uh, Ms. Thompson, you've had less time than everybody else, and I apologize it's for that. Okay. I'll, I'll call on you first. Um, so you're you're wanting me to choose between those three? Not necessarily. Give us your number. What tax rate do you believe we should be working from? I'm, I'm not really sure. And do you have a recommendation? I, well, I I. I knew last week um, Bill and Craig had the meeting. They've had some good, strong figures, and they've worked together. And I mean, it was it was go, and we saw that. It was amazing. But um, I I just I don't I just had something. You know, look, we all know I come at this a lot different from y'all do. Um, numbers, people, and then somewhere in between. That's where we all kind of are at any time. Um, when I see certain agencies cut, I, you know, I think. You, we just can't do that because I know what they do in the community. Um, I just uh, see on the news what's happening with law enforcement and crime and homelessness and all that. And um, that gives me hesitation to think, well, we can't be that way here either. Um, but I, I wrote down something, if, and it's, it's just like a couple of pages, because I figured if I could read it, it would help me to stay on track. And if you guys can, you know tolerate me reading something, I'd really appreciate it. And that's all I'm gonna have to say. Okay, this is your time. This is my time, thank you very much. Um, what I did is I kind of went down some of the things that were talked about last time and I just wanted to make a comment about them. Just, it's my opinion, that's all, just my opinion. And I'll just go for it. Um, I wanted to talk about Crossroads. I said like, um, there's just no way that we cannot support this agency. I encourage all of us to go sit in the lobby and see the destroyed lives and all ages, both genders, too. Sorry, Ms. Thompson, I couldn't hear what I'm you I'm sorry, first Steve. Mm -hmm. I'm scared of that. Is that better? That's better, yes. Okay. Um, and that all this stuff that just walks through their door and the damage to these lives are just beyond what any of us can imagine. And I dare say that could even, there could be someone in this room, there could be someone in this building, there could be someone in this city right now that has used the services of Crossroads, and thank God Crossroads is there. They serve so many people, and many times nobody ever knows because they honor confidentiality as they should. Um, I do have some concerns about um, the Family Justice Center and Family Abuse Services. Uh, I just have a lot of questions as to what's happening between these two services. I know Joy Seriano was my director when I was their community educator, and sadly, cancer took her before she even got to get in that building. Um, there was a Family Justice Center director, Deanna Manning, and her assistant was Sherry O'Shields, who's still there, and they were in charge of managing the building, the maintenance of the building, scheduling times for the downstairs meeting room, and that was pretty much it. And Family Abuse Services was the anchor agency that was to have on site the services built around them to take all the pressures off the victims so they wouldn't be walking up and down the street having to tell their story a hundred times. And this was like under one roof, so to speak. This is a brilliant idea. We were the first in the state. A lot of people, Jim Robinson, a lot of people was behind that. Terry went to see, I think, in San Antonio or up in Texas to see how this model worked, and we brought it here and made it, excuse me, our own. And, and I'm curious as to what's happened or what's happening with Family Abuse Services. Um, is the Family Justice Center, are they acting as a nonprofit? Are they acting as an independent agency? They now have a staff of seven. Um, I can remember we were the first ones in there. My office was the last one on the right, and the county spent big bucks on that building for all the other agencies so that we could all be under one roof and serve domestic violence victims. Um, the Family Justice Center has two intake service specialists along with their other positions and, and I need to know are they doing 50 B's restraining orders. I know we don't have a domestic violence shelter so to speak and Family Justice Center has been gracious to provide funding for a emergency shelter services at motels but Family Birth Services, Family Services has been around for years. The third grade puppet show has been in the schools for years. And, and I'm asking, is our county government now taking care of domestic violence victims? I, all I need is some answers. I'm not picking on anybody. I put both these agencies up on top. But I just would love for them to be able to be at a next meeting so they could really clarify what their role is 
together because it seems like I need to know are they competing for the same grants or what because the Family Justice Center has a budget of almost $600,000 from the county. And I, I just I just want to know clarification, that's all. And I'll, I'll stand up for them any day of the week. Um, JCPC, the Just, uh, Juvenile Crime Prevention Council, I brought many articles about juvenile crime um, in our county, recently a 16-year-old allegedly murdered. He was by, murdered by a 16, 14, and 13-year-old. And let us not forget the murder last year in Western Orange County of one of our students and a 14-year-old very young girl. A local youth was charged with two counts of murder. It's hard, these are kids. This is horrible. Um, three 17-year-olds charged with home invasion and murder. Grand PD had found two 16-year-old males shot and killed in the woods, and an 18-year-old was shot, but he fortunately made it. And let us remember that we just had 80 people, young people, charged with pranks, and they were not allowed to walk across the stage to get their diplomas, kindergarten through 12. And one night of bad decisions cost them this milestone in their life. Years ago, my husband represented one of the three juveniles that was arrested and sentenced for the murder of 10-year-old Tiffany Lone. They, too, were all kids. At my Crime Stoppers meeting last night, I was told the biggest crime population now is the ages of 11 to 21. Yes, 11. Many, many counties provide the financial match that helps with juvenile crime, and I think we need to also. I'm supporting that. Um, talk about DSS. You all got the same package about foster care that I did. Those are the kids of cases that I'm around with drug-addicted parents. It's devastating to our kids, which can lead them into making bad decisions as they grow, and it becomes a vicious cycle. You want to know why some kids do the things they do? Look at some of their examples. We are dangerously low in social workers, and they are like the Marines in the field when it comes to these abusive issues. Are we ready to have our name on a death certificate for a kid? If we're not going to do DSS right and fund them the way they should be, close it. You can't put case after case after case on these few social workers and think that's going to be safe or mentally healthy for these people. If you remember anything I said last year when I was on the DSS board, I had asked CPS Director Angela Cole, how many social workers does she need to have a solid, healthy team for child protective services? She said, in a perfect world, 24. In a com competent world, 20. I asked her how many she had, and she had four while there were three in training. And I pray these numbers are much better, but, but I don't know. I, I, I kind of doubt it. We're dangerously low, and I just have to ask, would you or I just wait in a dangerously short-staffed emergency room with our kid if they were bleeding out? I would not, and I don't think any of us in here would either. Law enforcement, are any of us willing to work a 12-hour shift in the detention center knowing the shortages? I have mentioned juvenile crime. How about all the addiction overdose deaths? The multi-million dollar diversion center will do great work with triage, but we have got to have programs in case management. These issues of mental health and addiction are not fixed. They are a long-term commitment. If you think that building alone is going to solve this problem, we're all highly mistaken. Murder and rape are still happening. We're just in a mess. San Francisco is over 500 police officers short. Look at their streets and what is thriving on them, crime, drugs, and the homeless. Don't think for a second that Alamance County cannot turn into San Francisco. Read your local newspaper. Talk about mental health. Talk about bad choices. Talk about destroying mental health. Talk about families just being ripped apart, on and on. Crime, addiction, homelessness. It's our new terrorist. We don't even need Bin Laden anymore. We got ourselves to do this. I just read where Greensboro police are down to a single backup police car. Priorities and budget decisions. We don't live in Mayberry, and we can't be Barney and Andy and have only one car, and it stays parked at headquarters until they get a call. Patrol does it all and uses a lot of gas while they're doing it all. And last but not least, the tax reval. 51% um, of the country, age appropriate to pay taxes, does not pay federal taxes. Imagine if everybody that can't pay taxes could just pay a dollar. It'd be a different world. And I pay taxes. We all pay taxes. Mine went up right much. And I cannot stand watching people come before us and say they're not sure if they can afford to keep their house. Your home is the foundation for everything. Look at the outcomes of those who do not have a home. We are not the Egyptians bullwhipping the Hebrew slaves in the mud pits, but it can feel that way if this revout is your pit. We must do something, but at the same time, we must be safe. None of these issues have changed because of the revow. Revenue neutral has been made to sound like the answer to all, and I pray it is. I'm in full support of revenue neutral to get the balance in all of this, but I'm not going to su 
sacrifice the public safety. We're in a real battle, and if you're a Christian, you know it's a spiritual battle. And I have voted for a tax, I have not voted for a tax decrease for the last two years on this board. I wanted the rate to stay the same. Sooner or later, the bottom may fall out, and we gotta be ready, and that money might have helped, but that's water of the dam, and it's over. If the vote is to cut all of these services to achieve revenue neutral, I can't support it. I will never risk the well-being and safety of our citizens, all of them. If we've got the money in the general fund and we can use that to balance this out somehow to make sure everybody is covered, that's what I'll support. Um, <laughs> I just um, want to make sure that we just do right by our citizens and we all have an idea what that is and I think if we can all pull all those ideas, I think we'll be really good leaders. That's it. And we thank you. Mr. Carter. This is really tough. I think it's tough on all of us. We know what we need. As said last week, the county manager's job is not to come and tell us what we want to hear. It's to come and tell us what we need to do a job for our citizens. And then we have to figure out what we think we can afford. Um, the sad part is that we've done a reval, which I fully believe needed to be done. Um, apparently, from everything I'm seeing in the marketplace, if we'd waited another year, it would not have come down. As a matter of fact, it would have gone even higher. All the projections I'm seeing in the real estate market today are running 5% or better growth for the Alamance County market in this coming year. So we wouldn't have seen a we wouldn't have seen any downward pressure on the revaluation. If anything, we would have seen a higher dollar. Um, I've worked with uh, Bill and with Craig. I've listened to Pam. Most of what we already have on the table, I think. I, I, I've worked through the reasoning behind it, and I don't have a problem with it, except for some of the issues Pam just brought up today. Um, and, and I've had those same issues on my heart. Um, for I see it. I see some room in the forty-three cent number to give us potentially as much as $500,000 to help out in that vein if we can find the cuts we need at other places. I don't know whether we can get there or not. If I'm reading this correct, we're still looking at $707,000 in cuts to get there. Am I correct? So it's tough. I know Bill had some ideas I wanted to hear. He had some additional ideas. I was talking to him last night that he wanted to present today, and I, we didn't get a chance to talk about them in detail last night. I'd like to hear what he has to say there. He had some, some good ideas along with what Craig brought to the table. So, Just on the, on the spreadsheet that's projected in front of you, that third column with the 43-cent tax right. rate is returning $700,000 you're, you're, oh, I got you. You're seven hundred thousand. Okay. That's not a whole. Good. That's a yes. Right. Okay. Right. So good. Then the parentheses in the left column for revenue neutral, you're short three hundred twenty-three thousand with those adjustments, just to help. And that's after the adjustment for uh, this includes the all salary study. That has not been mentioned yet, so we don't have that captured here. Okay. The compression study. I'm sorry, <laughs> not compression. Um, compensation study right. that we have is currently in there at 667000 with the January 1st implementation. Okay. So that's not up here as a cut. These are just 
adjustments if you wanted to do something different with that. Well, and, okay. and I've said, uh, I talked to our, I've talked with our other commissioners about the idea of um, trying to see, move that forward so that we don't wind up losing people before we have to spend more money trying to replace them and train them. That's what we've been through for the last couple of years. We've been through a huge level of expense replacing people and training them for the job. And it's kind of like we're robbing Peter to pay Paul when we do that. We're taking money away from ourselves when we could just be taking care of our people and trying to hold on to them. So I think we looked at that. You and I talked about that number, and we think that number looks like maybe three hundred, three hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Are we adding three hundred thousand? Which would bring that down to around three hundred and sixty thousand dollars, three seventy. I just want to be clear what what you're asking for then is to take the move it forward ninety days forward from January one. Right. So October one. Right. You said you thought you could have the the uh, study complete and ready to implement by that time. It's an ambitious time frame I for know. us, um, and we haven't quite figured out what that first third would encapsulate, but we feel like we could probably right. make that happen. And the cost projection, I think, on that was an additional 330000 333000 So can 333. add a line to... Um, there you go. And this is only utilizing half of the survey that you were actually looking for, or are you just delaying the start date? It's still only one third okay. of the organization. I think just what about Commissioner about Carter is suggesting is uh, it, speeding up the time frame, the implementation. Real quickly on that, you mentioned that that comp that. It's an ambitious goal to come up with those values by October 1st. What's a, a realistic goal? We thought January 1 was realistic. Oh. But, okay. yeah. So, so what, we've, what we've had done so far is just a sample of positions from a variety of departments to give us a rough estimate of what it would cost to do a full study. We actually need the full study with all of the positions of the first third benchmark with everybody else. And just to be clear, it's not the six hundred and sixty-seven thousand dollars is not to pay for the study; it's to implement right. the study once it's completed. Correct. Exactly. That's right. You've uh, already committed in this year's budget forty-five thousand dollars for the study, so we have that money in hand to move forward with the so implementation. Yes. I just don't want to budget money for something that we can't do. So I mean, sure. What's your best estimate on whether October thirty-first is doable? October 1st. October 1st. I asked our HR director, and she said, that's ambitious, but if that's what we want, we'll make it work. Okay. All right, I'm going to take, if Mr. Carter, if you're through temporarily. Yes, sure. All right. I'm going to take the next shot. Uh, I agree with Ms. Thompson that cutting out those nonprofits and, uh, and doing those county matches so they can receive grants. Uh, I know because I did a heavy duty uh, trial practice for many, many years. Those agencies do real, I mean, really positive things for our entire community. And it, it's not the poor, it's not the rich, it's not the, it's across the board for almost all county citizens. Uh, our, particularly like what you just handed out, which is on the screen currently, uh, with those recommended cuts, with the exception of uh, cutting out the 274000 for the outside agencies, at JCPC, Crossroads, um, Family Abuse Services, and so forth. I'd like for us to plug that back in. Um, taking these other recommended cuts that are currently on the board. And I think that's a combination of what all of us at some point have talked about. Um, and I think Mr. Lashley partially talked about 
many of these things Mr. Turner did, uh, and I think I have fairly consistently. Um, I would propose and I ask that we all determine what you think the tax rate should be. So I'm proposing that we go with the 43 cents per hundred. Uh, that's not revenue neutral. It's not revenue with the inflation rate. It's well below that. Uh, but I think it's a good compromise. It does come up with 707753 plus dollars. Uh, with these cuts recommended, if you plug back in <coughs> the 274 for those uh, outside agencies, that still leaves a surplus of $433,753. So we're still in the plus. It gives us the ability after that 90-day freeze to have a little money left over so that we can look at plugging in other spots uh, as those needs occur, and it does not leave us in a negative balance. Um, so, folks, at this point, and I'm certainly listening to everybody else, uh, and I know that Mr. Turner and Mr. Lashley uh, are going to have other comments, but I'm proposing at this point we go with the 43 cents per hundred. We do not eliminate outside agencies, JCPC, uh, family uh, abuse services, and so forth, uh, and crossroads, um, which will still leave us with $433,753 in the plus category. And that's... Uh, we actually have the actual figure up there. It should be 374 753 I think you didn't calculate the... Um, the accelerate compensation study just yeah, above that that added three hundred thirty three thousand. And you're gonna have to take off the two seventy four off that three thirty three. Oh, three seventy four. I'm sorry. Yeah, it came back in. Can you cut line fourteen again, Jessica, as yep. zeros? Yep. Right. Okay. That's what I got. One uh, hundred thousand seven fifty three. Okay. Left over. Thank well, you. it still leaves us in a it sure does. category. The <laughs> numbers are fluctuating. Uh, whether my numbers are on the point, <laughs> but anyway, that's that's my suggestion. Um, okay, Mr. Tony, you got cut off because of the clock at our last work session. So let me. This oh, is you're your talking turn. to me. Okay, all right. Um, <clears throat> okay, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Oh, let me add one more thing, by the way. I pulled the Burlington, and I wish Sheriff Johnson had to go to his press release at uh, 2 o'clock. Press conference. Uh, press conference. Um, so he's not here, but I want him to hear this, and hopefully he'll go back. I pulled the Burlington Police Department salary range, and I read it. It's a number of pages. I read it in its entirety. Uh, and they do not provide family coverage. Uh, they make it available, as we do, if for extra monies, any county employee can have family coverage. Uh, they can also have um, employee versus spouse coverage. They can also have family and only children coverage. Uh, and we provide the same thing with extra money from the employee. Um, Burlington, and I've got it right here. Uh, one, they provide uh, for a total value, and I've forgotten the exact numbers. It's something like ninety-five thousand, and a good most of that is chewed up by employee coverage. Um, and they adjust theirs annually, not just a policy, but they every single year adjust their numbers, uh, and they say for. Extra, extra money from the employee they will provide and they spell out employee only they spell out employee plus spouse they spell out employee plus children only no spouse they uh, also spell out uh, employee and family coverage but the employee does get a portion based on that maximum amount that they change every year but the employee is, is providing most of that cost on their own, particularly 
for the family coverage. And it's right out of there. Uh, you can go to their website and pull that off the city coverage. Um, so that we've been, we were told that the city's providing full family coverage. They are not. I'm sorry, Mr. No, Mr. You're, you're fine. You gave me a chance to <clears throat> figure out exactly what I was going to ask Susan. Okay, Susan, I wanted you to yes, give this board the number of the last budget that we're working off of currently. What what was the total? I think it was, I think it was two hundred million five hundred thousand. But I know we had some budget amendments that probably brought that up to two hundred three. Yes. Just wanted to get that firm number before we go further. Okay. Thank you. This is for 2022-23. The budget we're working on currently. What what did what did the what did the commissioners vote on? So the original budget was passed at two hundred three million two hundred thirty eight thousand six hundred eighty nine dollars. Two hundred three two thirty eight. Six eight nine. Okay. Uh, the reason I ask you for that number is because uh, if we just do a little bit of math and just take the inflation rate and apply it to that 203 number, we get somewhere in the neighborhood of 213. 212 and a half is my number. Um, and I just, I just, the reason I say that is if we're looking at this number here, that revenue neutral number, the, the top number is the one that I want, the 217, 587. Mm -hmm. If we take everything that we've put in that column out, where is that number currently? Like, if we take everything that's in that column out, what is that overall number for the budget? The 217. So, 217, 587, 666 is where we, I know, that's where we <laughs> currently stand right now. So, Jessica, if you could do a formula there at the bottom of each of those columns and pick up that, the current budget amount, mm -hmm. and then... Add to that, uh, so if we were to get to revenue neutral, we would need to cut 7.1 million. So if you'll just add those cuts there in row, I believe that's row three, row four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, you probably don't want that one. You probably want the one underneath it. 2514 is where you want to start, correct? 2514 would be just the one cent. That's a value. Well, I was, so, I was just wanting to add that whole column up to see what it come up with. Okay, so our... 210, 447. Mm -hmm. So that's what our budget would be if that column was passed. What was your proposed for the general fund after the inflationary adjustment? Like 212. Okay. 212 is where uh, I think that uh, the budget could be and still be able to take care of the needs of the county. Okay. I got a little bit of room there, but that was my initial number in January. So that's what the budgets would be if they were adopted. Okay. The but, but I don't made. think that takes into account the changes that were actually made because we actually added some right. and didn't subtract all of it. I think it's the one you didn't pull in was the 333 number. That's mm -hmm. correct. Uh, if, you to, if you just, if you just added yeah, that was my initial down number down that I wanted to shoot for. And if you look at the, it, it, the reason I'm shooting for that number is uh, it's pretty much right there. If you were to take the top right number neutral. and then yeah. add everything in that column, you take inflationary in consideration, and including the number of the inflationary. But the 43 so, numbers. Mm -hmm. numbers yep. really so, commissioners, I think that the numbers that you're seeing there at the bottom would be correct because okay. if you're looking at the figure that 1.3, I'm in the inflation neutral column, 1.3 million, which is right above the 212, because it's a positive number, those would be funds that you would be able to add back to that budget. So, they could increase. In the revenue neutral, we would still need to cut 930,000. Mm -hmm. to get there. That would result in a budget of two hundred ten million. Mm -hmm. That actually looks pretty good when you compare it to what's going on out there in the marketplace. That two ten and a half looks like a pretty decent number. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a couple of questions about um, the staff that you intend to freeze 
Yeah. Um, the reason I bring it up is I had uh, spoken to our uh, health director, mm -hmm. and he brought it to my attention that there were a couple of positions that he was very close to filling yes. and didn't want to, uh, first of all, lose a qualified candidate. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that wanted to just see if we could, if there's something that we could possibly do to Yes. You know, I, I talk with Tony, and Tony, if I say anything wrong, please speak up and correct me. But I think that what uh, Tony was telling me was that he has an opportunity to hire two lead. Uh, one's a regular uh, practitioner, and one's a lead practitioner, and mm -hmm. actually helps the uh, clinics for the uh, pregnancy clinics. Correct. And did not want to take a chance on losing these qualified candidates who we desperately need. Sure. And this would be two good candidates that we could possibly the land, and I know that Tony is doing yeoman's work and, and making sure that we uh, contact these folks who are qualified in a very, very quick manner so we can let them know that the candidate that we're extremely interested in yeah. don't want to get away. So I didn't want something like that to slip through our fingers because right. we're so close. And I, you know, normally I would probably um, l look at it a little further and see if we could do something later on down the road, but it appears that these two positions are, yeah, they seem, and, and I think, um, the total cost for the two positions with uh, salary and benefits was about 260 for the two. I think it was, I think the number Tony was 264. Yeah, that was the salaries I think. And what I did is I just took took everything and put it together, and that's what we came up with. Um, so what I have in front of you, Commissioner Lashley, thanks for giving us a chance to talk about this one a little more. Um, when we talked about this. Previously, it was a snapshot of what was vacant about four weeks ago. And since that time, I've had a number of departments who have engaged in the hiring process and extended offers. Um, so what I've distributed before you is a snapshot that was taken yesterday, I think, um, a couple of days ago. So it's a little less. We have moved forward on some positions. So you see the health department positions aren't actually included any longer. So these are um, what are currently open, but I've given you a status to help you understand that some of these have been posted, some have uh, had interviews conducted. So there are currently 15 open positions, and we have taken off the positions that are in the hard to fill um, high vacancy departments. So you don't have any positions on here from DSS, health, EMS sheriff or detention, which is where the bulk of your vacancies are. Uh, so we have 15 left, and I did want to remind you that in the managers recommended, we've already cut um, 49 and a quarter vacant positions. And I say cut, what we've done is just not fund them in the upcoming budget. So that saved about 4.4 million. And then we also did not have any new positions. I don't know that we've had a chance to look at this, but this is the spreadsheet that includes all of the positions that were asked for in this budget that I did not fund. Um, and I admittedly will say that a lot of these have given me some real pause because there are needs for new positions uh, in the budget, but we just couldn't afford them. So none of the positions here um, are included in, in the budget. And I, I bring that up just to say that we've already hit the personnel uh, lines pretty hard in the manager's recommended budget. We're having difficulty hiring with a 15% current vacancy rate. Uh, I think this is strapping departments a little bit more uh, to not be able to fill their current vacancies. But if that is the desire of the board, that will save you about $214,000, and those positions could then be filled after 90 days. I happened to be in a meeting last week in which the issue of the uh, EMS station in Mebane came up. And uh, we've got situations over there right now where we don't have EMTs answering calls because we don't have enough. I don't want to be the person that doesn't have an EMT if I need one. Right. I don't think anybody else does either. I mean, it's everybody looks at us and thinks we ought to be cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting, but 
the people out there who want the services that these cuts put at risk, um, I mean, there's there's a point at which you cut into you've gone beyond fat into muscle and are starting to hit bone, and I'm I'm afraid we're starting to get close to that point. We also took a loss in the debt with the EMS rides, so to speak, right. over a million dollars last year too. That adds up. Wait on me. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, so, uh, Heidi, what, what do you think we can do about those positions for the health board? I just, I know after so speaking with Tony, he um, he did want to get caught on the June 30th and not have someone right. inked. And I just want to see, well, how, how do we go about taking care of that? So, he's currently, until the board says no, he's authorized to move forward okay. with those positions. Excellent. This spreadsheet does not include any positions from the health department. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just saying if I... So if you if vote I, for this, he's still able to move forward. Okay. Regardless of the fact that there's a 90-day hiring freeze on these positions. Gotcha. So as long as we stay out of that spreadsheet, we're okay as far as uh, Tony's two workers. Correct. The okay. health department is not included on here. Okay. That's one. Um, let's see here. Okay. Um, just wanted to ask about the the cola. Yes. The the numbers that you had mm -hmm. in the spreadsheet has the cola at four percent. That's right. Okay. Um, wanted to ask you about the. I, I, maybe Commissioner Turner can fill me in on this to sort of uh, uh, sort of help me wrap my arms around that 1.614 number for the capital improvement plan? Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask if, ask Commissioner Turner, uh, did that 1.6 million, did that include the B. Everett Jordan field? So I have another slide, if you so could go back slide. It would allow us to do, the only expenditure change would be the $550,000 cut in the CIP spending for next year, right. which could be a portion to any of those 10 projects or so. So we didn't really, we didn't touch Pierre Jordan Field at all? Well, there's a $550,000 cut, could. and Commissioner Turner asked us to figure out how, how that would impact the projects. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've included on this slide for us to, to discuss a little further. We had $2.3 million approved for capital. The board is proposing to cut 550000 and then shift the remaining one point six to your capital reserve. The cut of five fifty. this is just a scenario that we think is um, doable, which would delay the following projects to future years. So the B. Everett Jordan Athletic Field, partial delay. We could do, you know, most of it, but there would need to we need to set aside some of that million dollars in order to take care of some of the other projects as well that were also high priorities. These position, these projects then would be uh, pushed out and you would save proportionally uh, the numbers that are included up there for each project. Okay. To I was get just, to uh, 550. I'm glad you showed the BR at Jordan because I had actually um, did a 50-50 split there. And the only reason I went 50-50 is um, actually after our meeting with uh, the superintendent of schools and the mm -hmm. maintenance gentleman, and he gave us some in-depth knowledge of uh, how these projects come come about uh -huh. and uh, how how long it takes to get a design through the process. And that design could take 90 days before you even turn over any dirt. So sure. that's why I was looking at it. If these projects are going to be back ended, when I say back ended, you give them the money, but yet it takes them six months to access that money. Mm -hmm. I thought that six months we could probably use that six months in our in our in our favor. That's the reason I was just asking about it. Gotcha. And it appears that yeah, two forty six is is good. It's not the number that I had, but it's close. It's it's good enough. Okay. Um, I think I had one last thing. Mm -hmm. Bill, can you tell me what that means for the Beaver Jordan project? Does that mean we're trying to spend 246 less on it? No. 
No, to delay some of the, the, the whole million's going to be spent on it. Gotcha. It's just that okay. this is going to take them some time to get that done, and it's sort of I was thinking. Why budget a half a million dollars if it's going to take them six months to use well, it? And we don't really know yet if it's going to cost a million dollars, right? Correct. I, I actually, looking at some of the things, um, looking at that particular uh, million dollars, and looking at some of the, talking to some of the construction workers and people who work in that, they told me that that million dollars probably has about $100,000 to play in it. Well, the fence well, is practically new. It wouldn't need nothing so done to it. So, if that's the case, you might be looking at spending 900 Right. But I think I'm good, John. I know I got one other question to ask, but I can't seem to find it. Oh, got it. Fire districts. What do we plan, What do we intend to do with the fire districts? We uh, have to handle those separately. Okay. And so after, if we can get through this okay. and come to some conclusion, then I'm going to recommend as a second part of this meeting today, we then go into the fire districts. Perfect. Commissioner Lashley, did you want to talk about the cost of living adjustment any further? Okay. Well, you brought that up previously. Okay. Well, I, you no, know, my position hasn't changed, uh, but that encroaches on the cost of living four percent. It's okay with me. I just would have to ask you about the merit. Is it going to be three? If it will, if that's the case, my, my numbers ha have not changed. My numbers are still five and two. Um, but the reason I wanted to try to do that is to um, readjust some of, you know, I pretty much explained to you about taking the total divided by. I have that for you if you want to. Well, have, have, has the 1040 number changed on how many employees that we have? I have that slide, Scott. Could you go back to my PowerPoint? Uh, right now we're oh, at 1037. Um, that's 184 vacancies, 87 filled. That's your 15% vacancy rate. And then I gave you some bands there. Uh, I think you'd asked me to follow up on that after the last one, just mm -hmm. take a swipe yes, at sort of dividing that so they're not, not even. <laughs> I wasn't sure exactly what your goal was with that, but that is with the way with the four ranges. Yeah, you, you did a great job. It doesn't really matter, just as long as it's it's not five, we're okay. Okay. I, I just want to see how 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 it fell. Um, okay. If we had Tony's two individuals, would that then go to ten thirty nine? I'm not sure. It's included in the vacant position. It is okay. Right. His two that he's filling right now would be gotcha. considered. They're not it. new positions. Gotcha. They're already Got included Thank in you. the numbers. Did so? Do you want to make an adjustment then to the spreadsheet to no. change the percentages from? Did you say five and two? So yeah, I was looking at the five percent coal. I basically, just leave it the way it was. I wasn't going to change anything. Okay, um, so that would require an adjustment. Yeah, on our it would, but it would be an adjustment against us. But see, uh, uh, the reason I'm even bringing it up is in, in, in my 212 number, I have that in there like that. So yeah. it's going to increase your number by 362,000. Total, because there's increase. an offset of the 336. Okay. Yeah, it'll be. How much is it? It'll be an increase of uh, 362,000 if you do uh, okay. five and two. Yeah. But it really wouldn't be an increase, Bill. No. When you take into account that we're looking at a at a at a right sizing, if you will, or marketing market mm -hmm. size for these critical positions, that five percent is going to be included in that. Yeah. So it's not really going to be. It Say will that reduce again, I'm that. Sorry. It'll reduce that. The com the that, compensation. It'll study. reduce that compensation study portion. Because it will already be in there with the uh, with the correct. with the five percent cola, yep. and it applies to all employees where the compensation is only going right. to apply to roughly a third. But there, it will bring that that number will be reduced by the yes. amount for those employees. So if you were to take that out, then that would give you about six hundred thousand to get to the But it will it will increase the amount that for the two thirds that aren't included in this first phase. Mm -hmm. So Jessica, do you want to reflect or Commissioner Lashley, do you want us to reflect 
a 5% cost of living, which does mm -hmm. go up. Can you make that adjustment? So take out the 748. You can, um, we can always put it back. See what it looks like. Yeah, we can always But put I know, it back. so it increase you about 365. And then we're adding, well, we're also subtracting 336 for the merit, right? Mm -hmm. So 748 becomes what number? Zero. Zero. Yeah, if we just no. take that out. That's the, that's the full freight. That's the full 5%. So you would reduce merit by 1%, mm -hmm. and that would be at a cost of 336. But the budget's already been. Merit, merit is the way that we were funding that additional mm -hmm. percentage was to reduce mm -hmm. the um, insurance premiums. That's so great, I forgot that. So it was kind of it was a swap to that. So right now we are at a zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we don't need to add that line mm -hmm. eighteen, Jessica. Sorry for the confusion. Well, you got to adjust the. It won't impact the general fund, right? Because it's out of the health insurance. Right. Even so what we were doing is instead of transferring those premiums for three months, if we leave, if we were to leave merit at two percent, then we would continue to fund our health insurance. So it's a wash. So it would it's be a wash. wash. Yeah. So we should probably just stay with the what you guys had initially. Unless the board were to choose, <clears throat> excuse me, to not fund health premiums for those vacant positions for those three months, and if that's the case, then we would put the three thirty-six as a negative. Now you should be able to take hypothetically one third of funding five percent and reduce the implementation of the salary study by that amount. I right. think that's so, so. I believe that the way um, HR computed those figures were they were independent of each other, in that the five percent cola would help assist getting us to that market that's what I'm saying, quicker. Right. Um, so right now those two numbers are independent of each other. So they were not they were not computed based on a five percent cola. They were computed based on actual salaries. Right. So if you bump up it's, the t total salary base by 5%, then you're reducing the cost of implementation of the study. It's possible. Yes. It's possible. It's just, yeah, it, it's and just it may an not estimate. actually do it. Exactly. Right. That's the other side of it. Just an estimate at this point. Right. On that slide before, it was talking about an HVAC. Didn't we use COVID money to do a lot of that? You did use some of that, but there's still other HVAC systems mm -hmm. um, that are funded in your capital improvement plan okay. that we didn't. That was for only one building. Okay. That was for the human services okay. building. You're good? Yeah, I'm good. But, you know, as, as, as far as this coal is concerned, um, if the board's good with 4%, I, I I like what uh, Commissioner Turner, I like his approach to that, uh, four and three. Uh, and after talking yeah. to uh, the county staff, uh, not everybody gets the merit. That's just not, that's just a, an assumption that <laughs> I thought it was a layup. Uh, and it was uh, actually good to know that it's not that you actually have to earn it. So I'm good. Well, I've said before, I'd, look, I'd almost rather see a higher, a higher uh, merit and a lower COLA. I can understand. Because that. To take care of the people that are doing the, the job we need them to do, make sure we're taking care of them. I talked to another director of a so, um, smaller county um, department of social services, and um, she was telling me that mm -hmm. they have a lot of people to come there. They train for a while, and based on what they're paid, they leave too. So it's um, it's pretty common unless you're bigger cities, but no matter where you go, you're still dealing with the same subject matter. It's yeah. hard work. You just got to make sure they're all self care and taken care of, and not so many cases. Just got a good staff. Mr. Turner, did you finish with your proposed cuts? Um, just a couple of comments. Um, I wanted to, to verify. So we had talked at the last session about. Uh, a freeze for the year for some positions, but the only yes. one that's in there currently is the 
limit the freezing of the tax. I don't see it. Uh, yeah, the tax appraiser position, which right. Mr. Atkins said that he could live without. Yeah. That's the only permanent freeze um, beyond the 30 days that's there. Well, already I have frozen the, like, uh, yeah, I'm trying to, 49 positions have been frozen already. Okay. That was divided between DSS, health, and um, detention. Is that right? Which, if there's a big hiring uh, boon, then we right, we'd have to come back. Okay. That's right. But the changes to that, the only permanent freeze is the uh, tax appraiser position. Mm -hmm. The I only change so. to what? Right. So yeah. that would be an additional. Right. Um, let me go back to that one. So you have forty nine point two five, which are frozen. And you would add an additional one, right. making which that Mr. 50. Which Mr. Atkins was? Yes. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I would say in addition to what I said last time is that I spoke to Ms. Betts, who's the Executive Director of Family Abuse Services, which is the entity that works in conjunction with the Family Justice Center, um, about the $75,000 requested in the budget and what that was used for. And she indicated that it is for um, supervised visitation at the Petrie Building uh, with when DSS removes parental rights from mm -hmm. from uh, families, when judges do that, yeah, uh, based upon a DSS recommendation, it, it allows them to have supervised visitation with that with that parent, and that the seventy five thousand dollars funds uh, a person to oversee that and some additional materials for that, particularly for that program, and that the county had funded that last year on a pro rata basis. Uh, because it just got up and running again after COVID. And I've also talked to some of the district court judges who believe that's a, a very valuable tool in their box to be able to slowly, when necessary, re-enter children into the parents' lives who've had their their parent um, rights restricted. So um, uh, that, that hit home to me, and so I, I understand that and, and wouldn't advocate for that cut. Thank you. And that is not cut, correct? We have restored that seventy-five thousand dollar cut for all of for both family abuse and crossroads, and we've restored the JCPC match in this iteration here. When Kim Bible was working with us, she and Jim Robinson basically created the supervised visitation program. We were on Lexington Avenue upstairs, Lord have mercy, and um, it, like Craig said, it was court ordered because um just the, the destruction of families and having to reunite that, but not safe yet to do that. And that monitor sat in that room the whole time and watched a parent play. And it was um, real high intense stuff because a lot of damage had been done. But those children were always safe and always guarded. I might add to that, that new facility is so well laid mm -hmm. out. Um, you can have the offender come in one entrance uh, the family member of the child and the other, the parental parent, come in a separate entrance. Uh, there's always somebody there to supervise, uh, and law enforcement mm -hmm. there as well. Just a very, very necessary. Uh, and yes, like Mr. Turner said, uh, the judges a lot of options that without that facility, they simply don't have. All right, I'm going to start. Mr. Turner, with you, and I'll, I would request that you give me a number and three minutes or less on justifying your number. Oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I was intent to work down towards the revenue neutral number. You know, we're not quite there. Uh, I think it's it's best to think about revenue neutral and then think about what services, rather than think about the tax rate number, start with revenue neutral, think about what services are essential, and then base a, a rate based on that and I'm not I'm not there yet Mr. Carter I'm inclined to agree with what Craig just said I mean we're not quite there yet but the other side of this is I I'm looking at what we're trying to throw back in and keep in and the thing that just keeps hitting me between the eyes is that EMS station and the number of ambulances we actually have running you know it hits me that we're not going to get that built and staffed and equipped this year. Right. It's not going to happen. No. 
But a question I have is how much will it cost to get it started, go into the process of locating property, design, acquire real estate, mm -hmm. and move forward from there. In this year, how much would that cost us? Because, I mean, if, if we don't start it, if we wait another year to even consider starting it, then we're even further out, and we're we're not. 30 new subdivisions being built in Alamance County, 30 new subdivisions. How in the world are we going to keep providing services to the people who are going to be living in these subdivisions if we don't have the people? Well, think about what all the volunteer fire and their EMTs oh, do know. for the, everybody else. It's amazing. It takes everybody. And so they're having a problem staffing themselves. Yeah. So. We have the EMS station in the Davenport model for a financing. Mm -hmm. And uh, in addition to the financing, I think we were planning to contribute $2 million of ARP funds towards right. that project. We are in the process of trying to find a site for that, um, but we do not have any funds tied up currently for that project besides the earmark okay. of the $2 million ARP. And I might indicate to those in television land or whatever it is, uh, we have actively sought sites uh, in the Mevin area and have actually looked at, at various sites. Uh, it just hasn't panned out yet. Yeah. That's going to be a very expensive endeavor to staff and to provide new ambulances for. I know. So that's something on our radar that's yeah. giving us some pause for moving forward and having enough revenues to support that. And that's in addition to the real estate and the building. Right. Yeah. Mr. Lashley, do you have a number? Yeah. I like the number that's up there. Which one? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> now that that didn't fly. <laughs> that's right. Um, you know, I'd really, I'm a little bit like Craig. You know, my goal was that 42.6 number. And just going back through it, it, it looks like it's going to be very difficult to get there. I don't, don't think it's impossible. Uh, but I'm like you, John. I think right now if you held a gun in my head, I'd, I'd have to have a 43 number. But then again, that 43 number is from January 30th, so it's not new. <laughs> But I, I could, I could, I think uh, the county. I still have to look at it again because I, I know I got some more tricks up my sleeve. I think I could get there. But looking at, you know, after talking to Tony and talking to some other department heads, that number at the bottom, that two ten, and a half number, that's a good budget. That's a good budget. When I say it's a good budget, when I sit down, I. My number was 212. And if I can get out for a million and a half, sign me up. Ms. Thompson. 43. So we have two maybes on 43. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's all um, I was going with 43, too. All right, so we have four mm -hmm. likely 43s. You were too, weren't you? 43. I mean, I think, as I said, I think we'd start with the revenue neutral number and see what you actually need. I'm, I wonder if there's a couple tweaks there and what's in column B. There is. Okay, let's talk about those tweaks. <laughs> That's about a million dollars difference. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's close. Um while I see it, the sheriff vehicle, mm -hmm. um, he was requesting how many? He requested 12. I included 10 in the manager's recommended. This would give him nine. Okay. Like last year, um, is there any way he could use that drug confiscation, you know, money that El Chapo likes to give um, that he could use to buy some of those vehicles as a trade-off? We think he could find some funds in his current budget before we close out the fiscal year. Okay. To reinstate that one vehicle. Okay. I had that conversation with him this morning, and he can. He's always so generous to work. He just wants to have staff, <laughs> yeah. people he, in the he field. Needs people. Right. If I might, Please the do. federal forfeiture fund that we're talking about That's related what it's to, yeah, yeah um, it's very tricky to fund 
vehicles out of that. We have to be very specific about which vehicles we purchase and for what purpose. So there may be a way to do that, but I don't know that's a guarantee. We've purchased vehicles mm -hmm. from there out of the past. What we have to be careful is with this coming up budget cycle is you can't use those funds to supplant your budget. Gotcha. So with the reduction in vehicles already taking place, if we were to go through an audit, that would be the first thing that they would question is the use of those funds to supplant the general fund budget. That's right. Because they're to be mm, used on okay. top of already allocated funds, not as a supplement. Gotcha. Okay, Mr. Lashley, you said you had more up your sleeve. Yeah. Uh, we haven't even talked about the, f the fire districts, and I believe you're going to find some money in those fire districts. Well, I agree. Let's, let's put that on separately. They do not impact the general fund. Yep, they don't? No, no. sir. No. All right. They do not so the only, th only thing we have to worry about, only thing we have to c concern ourselves with is making sure the, the revenue neutral number, well, the number that they're yeah. using, the tax rate, is going to be uh, uh, sufficient. But we'll handle these separately. Okay. That's going to be tough. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. You ask. Now I'm I looking up your sleeves. Huh? Yeah. Well, um, I just am looking at, you know, once again, I go back to the, um, I want to just, there, there are two columns on the one that you gave me last time, the one we were working on yeah. last time. Mm -hmm. uh, I still go back to that 1.614 number. On this sheet, we had about $2 million, one for, one million for B. Everett Jordan and a million for uh, Capital Reserve. Mm-hmm. That was a total of two million on that on this sheet. I just want to ask: Did we make that number one point six? Did we combine the two? I think what make? we did was take the two point three original number, cut five hundred fifty thousand. That leaves you with one point six. That's what we're. Yep. And so that's your budget for capital spending next year. And instead of it coming from general fund, Commissioner Turner had proposed to use your capital reserve funds for that. So there would be no general fund money okay. being spent on capital next year. Well, that's taken care of. Some. Should be some. Some. Yeah, yeah Susan's amount. saying a slight amount yeah. would be. Yeah. Um, so those two figures added together get you 2.164. Yeah. Right. And I believe that the plan is at 2.2 million, almost 2.3. So it's just a slight use of general fund dollars. Okay. Well, um, Chairman, the only thing I can really see right now is um, putting the 274 back in is probably like where you're stuck now. What do you mean? What, but putting the 274 back if you were to take the 274 out, it gets you to close, but is it really worth it? I mean, oh, the outside agency and, and those that, that outside agency cost is 295 or 294. I think if I remember yeah, correctly, that's, that's right. only 30%. 294. That's, that's 30%. Those are the matches for the grant. That's our 30% match. Yeah. Which you think about it, if you're getting a million dollars worth of services, it only costs you 300 grand. That's a pretty good deal. Huh. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. yeah, the only one that's a match is the JCPC, 30%. Right. The other two were just general fund, $75,000 flat allocations. Are we sure? Because I was told by one of the agencies that it was a match. I was too. But this was like three to... years ago when we were in the heat of COVID, and um, they were really struggling, and their grants had lost. I mean, yes. being on the Governor's Crime Commission is going to be – it's going to be something this year, too. A lot of agencies did not get funded across the state just because of the funds, basically. Um, and I know it was like, what, 275 divided over three years or something That's like right. that? Yeah. Or 225, one of two something. I mean, one thing I keep coming back to, and I'll press it again, is, and I don't want to budget for a compensation study that, we, that we're not ready to implement. Um, you know, if if we get to October 1st and we can't implement it, we've budgeted for something that we can't spend. I mean, I guess how confident are you that that our accelerated process gets us to a point where we can be ready to do that? 
<laughs> I am not <laughs> sure. I'm not handling that study myself. You're um, more. You're more. Uh, e you're easier. January first is a better number for you. We know well, that we could do it right. for January first, but again, I've asked my HR director, "Can we go out for bid and finish the study by October one?" She said it's ambitious, but we will make it work. <laughs> she is not here <laughs> to <laughs> say that to you directly. Um, I, I think okay. we can, but I, I don't. Well, and no, we don't I'll have to decide this this moment. Um, it's just a placeholder. I don't know what the actual study yeah. is going to look like. Um, we will be bringing that to you all for discussion as we yeah. get closer. I, I mean, so you know, we've got we've got a week. So mm -hmm. I mean, it'd be good to know that I think before we before we pass the budget. And just in, I, I'm not. Su I'm sorry. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that we have to wait till January. I'm just suggesting that we that we accurately predict when we can implement it. And if that's November, then we plan for November. If it's October, that's okay. I just want to be confident that... Okay. I don't want to budget for money that we're not going to spend. Okay. We just can't allow it to happen what's happened before. Do right. it and then not implement it. I mean, that just sends a message that's the wrong message. I just remember how well we dealt with COVID in parking lots and tents over at the SeaTac Center. And mm -hmm. traffic was probably worse than anything, but... We all work through it. I think we can do this too. This county can do it because they're awesome. So. That's right. Is number thirteen veteran services? Is that being cut? Is that the front person? That it's not a cut. It's a ninety-day freeze. So okay. they would not be able to fill that position for ninety days, beginning July one. Okay. This is a position they've had that we got last year. Yeah. Um, is that right? Did you get it last year? No, this is You're the receptionist position. Okay. Then we got a officer. So. Uh, right. Last year was an officer position. This is a different one. That's a, that's a big, that's a big difference making position. That wasn't on the last list. Was it not? No. It's the one I got right here. It okay. was the current vacant list was updated because some of the positions that were on that first list due to timing had already been filled. Okay. And so that's why you're not that's why you're seeing a revised list today. I was advised and correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, you know, we talked about having this vote on you know, a week from yesterday, that is next Monday, the nineteenth. But I think Ms. Stevens and our county manager both have indicated that we could literally take the vote today. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. yes. It's an official board meeting. There's a quorum present. That's what's required to take a vote. And a public hearing has been met as a requirement of general statute. So the question is, do we want to resolve this today or do we want to put it off or six more days. I think it would be a surprise to the general public if we voted on it today. I, I agree. And I, ag I, I agree as well and express that uh, to the administration, but I wanted everyone to know that that is a possibility. Right. Yeah, I think that would... There may be some people that will want to be heard on Monday, and I don't think we should do that before they get a chance to vet. She have 43. Mr. Lashley, are you fine <laughs> waiting till Monday? Yes, I'm, I'm fine right. waiting till Monday. So, we all agree, no votes today. Just one more, just one more question. The veteran services, that 90 days, does that mean they could start looking for that position in 90 days? Or does that mean it it's means over? that it could not be filled until October 1. Okay, but October 1, they can start putting stuff out to hire that person? Is that right? Or September 1. <laughs> okay, October 1. Mm -hmm. They could advertise, they could Can't interview, hardly. but the person, there would be no funding in place for the position for any of these okay. until October 1. Okay. I know some of these have been posted. Some of them are in interviews now, so it will impact the ability to move forward with these positions. I just know that position made a trem tremendous difference for the office. That they all make tremendous differences for the office. 
you look in OBGYNs, that's what yours are, practitioners or what are you talking about that Bill's talking about? Yeah. Well, I know I had, I've had several girls that were using heroin that have had to come to the health department because they were pregnant. Thank God for the health department. <laughs> Okay, board. Other discussions prior to going to fire districts? Take a recess. Yeah. Any other discussion prior to fire districts? No. All right. We're going to take a 10 minute recess and then we'll go into the fire districts. Okay. We're back in session. Okay, we are now looking at the volunteer. Well, Mr. Fire Chairman. Um, might I interject something before we finish the last conversation? Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Turner and I, I had talked with him about something beforehand, and we talked about it a little bit more in light of the new numbers. <coughs> Excuse me. If we move... <coughs> You want a cough drop? I got one. <laughs> uh, something went down the wrong way. I don't know. Not sure what it was yet. Okay. You need I a maneuver? Sometimes it can be <laughs> air. <laughs> we can go into fire districts and come back in 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we do have medical um, personnel on our side. <laughs> if, we move, um, if we move the salary, if we move the implementation to November to give you more than and make it more realistic, uh -huh. that creates about $150,000 to put the with the 84000 that's on there in number three, November. row three. That puts us in a position to, no, that's not right. That creates about 160000 60 some odd thousand. That puts us in a position to fund the veteran service position at 11 and bring your contribution to... Uh, ABSS up 150 to bring the uh, supplements up. Okay, let me just make sure I'm understanding. You'd like to adjust the compensation study implementation date back to November one. So we if think it's, if it's real, if we really think that's going to be a uh, that would give us a little more time to do a little thorough. In October, there's no point in funding it before we get, can actually get it implemented. Personally, I want it done as fast as we can. It's a I, mean, I, I don't have a problem with doing it next week, yeah. but <laughs> we can't get there. <laughs> it takes um, a while. Right. So um, I'm so. hoping that that would be an additional 111. Plus 84 is right at. Okay, so we would be accelerating the study two months instead of three months. Right. So add back. Or Hundred and uh, what you say, hundred and eleven. So it'd be a, plus a hundred eleven plus eighty four would be a hundred and ninety five. Yeah. Uh, then if you take eleven off of that to go ahead and fund the uh, administrative assistant for the veteran services. Because right now, what's up here is and then. Okay, let us get the cost okay. right real quick. Yeah. So what's up there right now would be a a three month. Would be a three month cost because the six hundred and sixty seven thousand was right. starting at Ju was starting at January. Right. So that would be an additional three months there. So if we take two twenty two. Basically a third three, of that away be a one thirty three and add to that one month cost is fifty five thousand five hundred and eighty four dollars. Right. So add that to the three thirty three. Get you one sixty six. Yep. Five eighty four. Yep. How much? Fifty five. No, no. Take a third of that off. Be taking a hundred, hundred eleven off of that. One month. Two months. Okay. <laughs> Just tell me what the number should be. Am I going backwards? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we to fund the extra three months because right. our Two. having it start in October. Right. Was so that would be October, November, December. Three months funding was three hundred and thirty three thousand. Right. We need to add back to that hundred and eleven thousand. Correct. Which would make it two twenty two. So that would make it two twenty two. 
That just keeps it easy for us to add it in. So then that gives us 195. Okay. The veterans receptionist position, 11, admin assistant 11, position, is already funded in the budget. You were just wanting to not have the hiring freeze apply to that position in particular? Right. Okay. All right, let me ask you, if you're going to do that, if you're going to fund that position now, uh, they have a lot. I, I get calls, multiple calls every week from veterans that are complaining that they cannot get into the veteran services office. They have to ring the bell, and most of the time someone comes to the door. Uh, I had two this week that said they rang the bell, waited, waited, and then went to their car. Uh, one was disabled. Um, and so that's a major complaint. I understand that Veteran Services, uh, their claim is that they are not in a secure position. Should we be looking for a new location for them? Question one. Two, why are they not safe when uh, yeah, Grand Presbyterian Church is right there? Everything is right there. And I pass by there pretty much daily. And I've never been assaulted. I've never been no negative comments made or anything. Um, but I'm concerned about veterans not being able to go in without waiting on a doorbell and things of that sort. Uh, so what are they going to do with this receptionist if they don't have an open lobby anyway? Well, I was under the impression that the receptionist was supposed to be in the open lobby, right? Yes, sir. But the door's locked. The door stays locked. Is that because of the White House beside you? No, um, it's actually due to the, we have a lot of veterans with PTSD and mental issues, so we do that for safety issues. That's what I was thinking. But we have a camera, and to my knowledge, there's not been anybody that hasn't been let in. Now, we had a little bit of problems with our last employee, but that's no longer an issue. But now, since there's no one at the front desk position, one of the VSOs is having to come out front, so it takes a couple minutes, you know, a minute or so to get to that door and unlock it. But we have a new sign that says ring bell for assistance, and we have opened that door every time it's rained. So, uh, My question would be, why don't you hire a big bad Marine as a receptionist, and then you don't have that problem? It's not a bad idea. <laughs> It could happen, uh, depending on the applicants. But that <laughs> position is very well needed because um, that's the first person that the disabled veteran meets. Correct. And I want that to be warmly received. And well, I didn't mean to mean a big man, right? <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you have to de-escalate the situation, like the front desk person in a school with a really ticked-off mom that may not got the whole story. <laughs> Well, in, in looking for that position, should that position be identified as security instead of receptionist? And you're going to get a different, typical, typically in my, my experience, you're going to get a different perspective on the person who might apply for the job if you're calling it a security role versus a receptionist role. Well, it's an administrative assistant role. So that means they're going to take care of the bills for the department. Um, ordering supplies, they get the person set up in the initial computer system, so it's a very important position. They answer the phone calls and then distribute them out as needed. So I think we're both hearing the issues about the uh, accessibility to the veterans, and that's one of the things we don't want to have a problem with, so well, that's why we, we went a, there. If we have a person in that position, we don't have that problem because they're right there opening the door, and we also have a cl door clicker that opens it automatically. Okay. But right now, there's no one at that position, so it just takes us a minute or two to get there to access the open door. How long has that position been open? Um, May 13th. May 12th was when that person left that position. So about a month. Yeah. you'd like to remove that one from this list. I just have a comment, if it's okay. <coughs> um, do we know yet, I know Mr. Carter just brought this up, um, 
Do we have any idea from the school system what they are looking for? I know that our representatives have said that the teachers are going to get a pretty decent increase in salary. I've heard 5%, I've heard 7.5%, I've heard it for two years. Do we have any idea of where that's going to land? Because wouldn't that, if we make an assumption that the teachers are going to get an increase in pay from the state, wouldn't that impact our supplement from the get-go? I don't know. So, Do you? It's, it's a big question. It's in conference right now right. between the Senate and the House. I think the Senate's budget was around a 4% raise. The House was around 11. The governor's was like 18. <laughs> So I uh, he can't even spell economic. I think there are probably two or three people in the state who, who know where, knows where that is right now, but it should be published pretty soon. Uh, well, I'm just saying we have to, you know, I mean, the reason I'm even throwing it out there, if you are uh, going to make the assumption that the teachers are going to get a salary increase, all I'm waving the flag is if that happens, it's going to flow down to us the way our teacher supplement is set up. And it looks like it's roughly 10%. It's a little bit higher than that. Mm -hmm. But you can make an assumption that if the teacher's pay goes up 5%, the teacher supplement is going to roll down. It's going to automatically increase at 0.5%. And mm -hmm. what I'm thinking, it's, I haven't heard, but I have to make some assumptions that the school board is intending to use that extra supplement for the teacher. So you're not going to get just a normal 1% increase. It could be... 1.75 to 2 percent increase if they don't make some changes. Just throwing that out there because sure. okay. we haven't talked about the teacher's increase in pay, which automatically affects our teacher supplement. Right. So whatever that number comes down to, I just want to make sure that as a board, regard, we're not going to have any say so about this unless, of course, we wait till the, wait till the state passes their budget before we would right. be able to do something. So I just want to make that known that that is possible and that's that's yes. and I just want to make sure that we don't increase our point. teacher supplement twice as fast as we normally do that's all yeah. right I agree and because that is as Mr. Turner indicated in conference mm -hmm. uh, my guess is our time limit on Monday will be probably before they pass their budget I would think so yeah. yeah, I had that similar conversation with one of our reps this morning. So, If that comes down to pass and we do accept our budget and we find out these numbers, is there any way we can come back and do a budget amendment on our own budget? You can always amend your budget, yes. You could make right. a mid-year adjustment to that. But I could also say, please don't do that. Oh, I, I, oh, I know. But I'm saying is if we are in a, find ourselves in a situation in which um, the increases to our te teacher supplement are faster than what we're willing to do as long as we have recourse to come back. Because we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it very well could be that uh, 4% and 11 comes back at 7. That's the middle. I mean, so we really don't know. You can't take it. Understand when, once we do find yeah. out, yeah, it could it could impact it. Could well, impact all those our listening, what is our increase in the supplement? What is our current supplement, and what is the increase? I know they asked for one point three million dollars in the supplement, and that was what looked like to me. It was like a um, they say a one percent increase. It's actually a ten percent increase if you do dollars. <laughs> Uh, so, in essence, what they're ask, asking to do, and it seems like that our supplement is based on, um, it's, it's, it's a segregate, it's a range, and I think the range is between 10 and a half and 12 and a half percent. Yeah, we have this, let's see. You're right about the range. So, they would like to use 1.3 million to increase local certified supplement rates from 10 and a half, 11 and a half, and 12 and a half to 11 and a half. 12 and a half and 13 and a half. So that's a 1% for each of those three. Um, let's see. And again, and what is the current rate? 10 and a half to 12 and a half. Right. Yeah, right now you're at 10 and a half, 11 and a half, and 12 and a half. Thank you. So the new, uh, if you were to fund an additional 1.3, that's 11 and a half, 12 and a half, and 13 and a half that it would go to. Now, this is part of their current expense budget. 
the commissioners don't have the ability to do a line item with right. incurrent expense. So you, the manager's recommended budget increased current expense by 1.1 million. So if you'd like to make it 1.3 million, they have the ability to use that however they would like. But Dr. Butler has said that the salary supplement is his biggest priority. It's a strong recruiting tool. Yeah. When you have shortages at teacher, they shop, you know, if they're nearby counties. We've so seen just, that in the past. It would just be an increase to current expense funds. Yeah, we were the 10th highest in the state out of 115 districts or sure. 13, whatever it is. Um, and I think we're currently 13th. So we're among the very highest already. Anything else, guys? Anything else? Did you want to reflect that in the... What would you like the, up there, Commissioner Carter? Um, um, the, I know the... Looking the, to see where that plugs in. You would need to take the 90-day hiring freeze and back out 11... Uh, right. 112. 11,112. And we can always come back later. Let's get it on the are there any other yeah. positions you wanted to discuss on the hiring to freeze? See what it looks like. Right. Commissioner Carter, then, were there any other positions you wanted on the hiring freeze adjusted, just the veterans? So I think we've made that adjustment. And then um, how much more? I guess that's question for you how much more are you wanting to put um, to the current and we obviously don't know the answer to that that's and we can leave that I think if we leave that 184 number or they whatever that number is uh, uh, the 184 number in there then we oh, can look at where we want to put that on Monday maybe we'll right. have some more insight I don't know you could put that towards their current expense right. funding if you'd like if you will give us an update on our numbers uh, later okay. this week. All right, I'll send that out as soon as we have any update. Thank you. Anything do. else for fire districts? All right, we are now discussing volunteer fire departments, and we were all just given a new sheet, so uh, we can work off that. And we also have the numbers that you previously have given to us. Oh, I got them. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lashley, uh -oh. I'll pick on you first. <laughs> well, where would you like me to start? Uh, with uh, fire districts. <laughs> oh, the fire. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that's what I'll start with. Um, I'm just actually concentrating on the top three. And that would be Swepsonville and E.M. Holt. And the top three. Have you got what list one? are you looking at? I'm looking at, I beg your pardon? Are you looking in the budget document? Oh, I'm looking or? at the, va the district valuation. I'm sorry. Are they listed like that? Uh, I'm, looking the at I'm looking at this one right okay. on, the, on this column right okay. here. Um, so you're just ranking you the, said top the top three. You meant ranked wise? Yeah, just the top oh, three okay. that the are uh, highest oh, value districts. Okay. And that's Swepsonville, Lenina number one, and EM Holt number two. Uh, mm -hmm. If you, if you look. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I said Swepsonville, didn't I? Mm -hmm. But that's not the one I'm curious about. Swepsonville and 54 East are okay in my book. Uh, but let's start with EM Holt. You okay with that, Thomas? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, E.M. Holt is the, you know, it looks like the current tax rate is 1175 and the proposed tax rate is 0 0.0792. Yes. You know, if you look at the revenue rate and you look at the proposed tax rate, that doesn't look like it's too bad. Okay. It looks like it's probably in line. So what I wanted to do is if you think that the big one, E.M. Holt, is in line, let's go down to the smallest one, which would be North Central Alamance. Who 
Who did they cover? That's all farm mm -hmm. and churches right. and no yeah. pay. Nobody gets paid. Exactly. That? I think that's the one that's really all volunteer. That's near Lake Hammett. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. think this is the one that's an all volunteer fire mm -hmm. department. Yeah. They only have one person who is a full time employee. Right. And they also cover Clover Garden. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Clover one I actually Clover thought Garden. was uh, needed. Oh, Clover the Garden. School, the charter school. Mm -hmm. That's right. Camp Green leaves at Camac too. Mm -hmm. Sorry, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, North Central Alamance looked like it was a little bit high, but when you look at uh, their m m all volunteers, it actually doesn't look high enough. Mm. It seems like that particular fire district, in my in my opinion, after looking at all of it, is one that needs to be funded more. And I was actually thinking about if there was some way that I could reduce some from the the ones that are out of whack, and the reason I say the ones out of whack, Eli Whitney mm -hmm. and Elon are two that are completely out of whack. But that doesn't affect the same district. No, it doesn't. I'm just comparing district to district is all I'm trying to do. But, you know, just looking at the, vo the, the, the fire department that's all volunteer is the one I'd really like to try to help because I can see looking at their finances, they're the wor in worse shape than anybody else. I know Eli Whitney said they've got a bunch of new developments coming out there too, housing, so it'll be, I mean, they all got needs big time, yeah. But to be honest with you, uh, the all and looking at all of these things, all the savings that I could look to find was less than $300,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I didn't realize, I didn't know if that would be, be enough to uh, turn, you know, turn the apple cart upside down or... Well, they've but I didn't really see a whole lot you could do with them, just a few that you could maybe reduce them. They've got about one and a third pennies above. Yeah. Or about one and a half pennies above, a little over one and a half pennies over revenue neutral. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, best I can recall, they had no objections in their meeting. I don't remember how many people they said they had. Yeah, Mr. Children. Turner asked, I think each fire district, mm -hmm. did you have any objections to this proposed rate? And I recall the answer being no, there were no objections. Correct. Mm -hmm. These are? Well, objections in the public hearing. I, I don't right. know. Correct. I, that, that was yeah. the question. Once they get the tax bill, it's a different yeah. story. <laughs> right. These are, for well, these fire districts, I think your volunteer fire departments are kind of like, I mean, obviously we think of our fire departments and our municipalities as our Marines, our law enforcement and so forth. That's what these fire districts are, to, or that's what these fire volunteer fire departments are to their districts. And I think they get embraced pretty heavily and supported pretty heavily in fundraising in addition to the tax rate. And I don't think the people, I don't know, this is just my assumption, I guess. If nobody comes out to oppose it, um, they kind of know what they need to budget. So, But you're talking about going up, I'm raising, the, raising their rate. Uh, well, just for the uh, the one at North Central Alamance, I think that's what I was looking at. Just because they were all volunteer f force, and it seemed like they their finances were in worse shape than everybody else's. That's all. But so they know, were going to be doing work to their building, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, pardon? They were going to be doing a lot of work to their building. Yeah. That's true. And they're going to be taking on uh, the new Clearwater Garden mm -hmm. High School. Yeah. When it opens up. Yep. That's a big difference. They just go home up. A little over a penny, and it's not a very much increase over revenue neutral. I guess the only problem I have with raising that is that if you if, if they've already presented this and the, basically their community has accepted it, for us to arbitrarily raise theirs and not the others is kind of send, sending a mixed signal, and it's if they assuming they but they've figured out what this is going to produce and what it's going to create for them budget wise. It meets the need for the work they're planning to do. So if we give them more, since they're not hiring anybody, are we assuming they need to hire someone? Nope. I was okay. just trying to shore up their finances. That's, that's, I understand. That's my, yeah. that's my only goal. That's, that's all I had. Because then I went through all these districts, and I couldn't really find, I really couldn't find a lot of money. It was like like two two ninety seven. dollars right. I found. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know... <laughs> It's really sort of crazy for me arbitrarily just to pick a number and throw my hat on it. Right. Plus, uh, I'm not a firefighter. I haven't been into a burning building. I don't know what 
everything is until in that? Well, they also have shortages too, mm -hmm. like full-time paid staff. It's, you're just seeing that look across our country right now. But I feel much better after what Susan told me that this doesn't affect my general fund. It does not affect right. general fund. So uh, I think that's where I am. <laughs> I think they worked real hard to try and get as close as they thought they could financially get mm -hmm. to a resident rate. They were sure. Right, and they know their money. I got yeah. through the meeting, so. Does anybody have a complaint with the proposed tax rate that we have before us? No. No. Now's your time. I only got problems with two of them, I mean, and that's not, not enough to start swinging a hammer. Well, I have been in my lifetime to a tobacco... Uh, tobacco barn fire. Tobacco mm -hmm. barn fire. Mm. And I have helped put out fires when living in McLeansville, like a field fire. Uh, I cooked a lot of chickens and fish <laughs> at E.M. Holtz Fire Station back in the day, and they told me they don't do that any longer. Um, but these folks do wonderful work. Uh, it takes training. I have a fire hat sitting on a rocking chair on my in my sunroom as you come in the back of my house right now. So <laughs> I have sympathy for these folks. Um, and you've got... 54 East below the revenue neutral, but then you tie that with SWEPs and they're just, oh gosh, 13 one hundredths over revenue neutral. So that's pretty much a, a sweep. Um, mm -hmm. I just don't see any complaints. And mm -hmm. I'm asking any board member if you do have or suggestions. Probably the biggest single swing is uh, autophilosophy. Correct. And that's still close. I have had a number of firemen and fire chiefs ask that we not cut their proposed rates uh, because of need for either maintenance on uh, trucks or equipment or all kinds of things. I uh, heard the same thing, yeah. yeah. So are we good on fire districts? Yep. Good. No issues. Okay. Okay. Do we have any other discussion that we need to do today? I don't think so. <laughs> any board member? <coughs> no, right. Do we have a motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you all.